Hello guys, my name is Jeremy. I've been skydiving for five years and I've recently become a wingsuit instructor here in France. I'm here today to talk to you about wingsuit deployments. Let's face it, today wingsuit flight is associated with higher chances of a cutaway. I mean, we're literally skydiving with a straight jacket on. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't keep full control on our deployments. Now, there are a few techniques out there. Bear in mind this is just one approach. And as always, be smart, try things out, but practice your EPs and stay safe. This wingsuit deployment technique was developed by our very own Stefan Zunino. Zun has actively been researching and testing this technique for the past few years in France. It is now being widely passed on to the latest generation of wingsuit pilots in France in first flight courses with remarkable results so far. Now, we're not going to go through the whole history of human flight together, but it's safe to say that wingsuits have changed a great deal in the last five to 10 years. And as our wings have evolved, we've been maintaining a constantly poor level of technique in wingsuit deployments. Of course, you do need to use appropriate gear. Ideally, a non-aggressive, square canopy, seven cell, docile, with a flat profile. But I feel we've been relying a bit more on the latest gear rather than using thoughtful, proactive technique. The technique we're going to talk about is compatible with all wingsuits for pilots with any experience level, in our opinion. From the beginner to the big suit experienced tunnel rat. Okay, let's dive in. Here are the three main goals we're trying to reach. First, we're trying to get the body into the same configuration as a standard deployment without a wingsuit. Which means 90 degrees from the lines at line stretch. Our second goal is to keep the airflow going to the canopy as clean as possible, even with bigger suits. And our third goal is acting as a solid controlled anchor in the relative wind close to knee flying, rather than acting as a passive ragdoll causing twists on the way down. The whole sequence must be controlled proactively. Use the airflow the whole time and anchor into it. These are the main goals. Now let's break down the technique into five steps. First step, adjust your speed to a moderately slow configuration. Slightly raise your angle of attack but do not arch, continue flying. Second, throw the pilot chute as far away as you can on the side. Throw it like you mean it. As you do this, immediately bring your head up. The reason we're doing this is to raise the angle of attack even more so that we can reach 90 degrees from the lines. In addition to this, we're going to grab our D-rings at the bottom of our risers then collapsing the arms will allow for a clean airflow going to the canopy and the slider. Third step, when you feel the hit of the canopy getting out of the deployment bag, bend both knees halfway into a double butt kick configuration. You should never see your knees go in front of you. Your body now rotates the remaining 90 degrees until aligned with the canopy lines. As we've said before, there's no need to rotate more than 90 degrees. If you've done this right, you should be flying on your knees into the relative wind. Fourth step, work to keep your harness nice and symmetrical throughout the opening as the airflow comes right into both shins. And finally, go on with your usual post-deployment procedures. This should result in smoother, more consistent and safer openings. Now, let's back up to the first step for a minute. What does adjust your speed mean? Well, remember how we need to set our angle of attack to be 90 degrees from the lines? 
while if you're flying too fast, you're going to get whipped in front of the lines. When you eventually fall back, the wind has a high chance of catching the back of your leg wing asymmetrically, initiating body twists. On the other hand, if you're flying too slow, you're presenting your pilot chute and your canopy into a huge burble. And that's a whole array of problems waiting to happen, from a huge delay to a slider not catching enough air and causing a hard opening, or even a canopy dancing in the burble. Funky stuff. All right, that was a lot of things, so let's sum it up. One, adjust your speed. Two, throw your pilot shit like you mean it, head high, grab your rings. Three, canopy out of the bag, half butt kick, four, control your harness and the airflow on your shins, and five, go on with your post-deployment routine. And stay alert on the canopy. And that's all there is to it. Make sure you get all the steps right. You are not abandoning yourself to fate as soon as you throw your pilot chute. This is a very active process. Whether you're at home, on the drop zone or in the plane going up, you might want to close your eyes and visualize. Think about the whole process step by step in real time. You also might want to check out the latest pushes in R&D in terms of canopies. Whether it's the PD Horizon or other makes and models, technique is queen, but gear does matter. So spread the word. Proper control technique and a comfortable wingsuit friendly canopy. Simple steps to make your wingsuit deployments safe and enjoyable. Blue skies.